Hey, what do we got here? Hey there, how's it going? I have a, uh, I guess, album of old German money. Okay, where'd you get this? Um, got it from my great grandpa, and when he passed away, I kind of acquired some of his stuff. All right, it's um, not geld. I have no idea what that okay, means. Okay. That is emergency money. If suddenly government came to you and says you can print your own money, what are you gonna do? Um, print a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here at the pawn shop today to sell an album of old German money. Uh, I don't know much about this, but it looks like artwork, and I think that's pretty interesting. I'm hoping to sell the album for about $2,000. It's interesting. In 1919, at the end of World War I, the Treaty of Versailles was destroying the German economy, mm. okay? I mean, with this treaty, the French could just walk into Germany and take stuff and leave. And there ended up being currency and coin shortages in Germany. So they basically went to all the cities and said, just print your own money. Okay. So next thing you know, every city's printing their own money. What ended up happening in Germany was hyperinflation. Like before World War I, a loaf of bread in Germany cost you one mark. In 1923, it cost you 100 million marks. Wow. It was just massive inflation. Oh, this is great. 5,000 million marks. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sounds legit. All these cities had a chance to print their own money, so they put, like, legends from those small towns on it. You know, some are really colorful. Some of the engravings real nice. Some of them are just hideous. Like, this guy's, like, tied up and getting burned at the stake or something like that. This stuff was really, really weird. So would you say it has any historic value or anything like that? A little bit, but the stuff's not rare. It's kind of cool, though. Um, yeah, it, it's kind of neat, you know what I mean? How much you want for it? Honestly, I was expecting 2,000 when I walked in. The problem is it's a really small market, and there's a lot of it out there. Um, I give you 200 bucks for it. You think you can go higher, like maybe 250? You know what? I can do 250. All right, man, thanks. Good deal. Yeah, I appreciate it. I'll meet you right over there, and we'll do some paperwork, OK? All right, thank you. You got to admit, if you'd have the opportunity to print all the money you wanted to, you'd probably print a lot. Hey, how's it going? Hi. What do we got here? I brought you an antique national cash register. OK, and where'd you get it? This was gifted to me by an uncle of mine. Did he give you a receipt? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here at the pawn shop today to sell my antique national cash register. I got it from an eclectic uncle that gifted it to me about a year ago. Considering the age, it appears to be in great condition. It's made out of nickel-plated brass. I'm hoping to get $1,000 for my cash register. This is really cool. This is, I think, a Model 95 made by National Cash Register. Everything about this company was great. It's one of the very, very few companies that's been around for almost 150 years. When they started off in 1884, their big problem was convincing store owners that you needed a cash register. <laughs> <laughs> he had salespeople walk into stores like, you need a cash register. Well, why? What's the place to put your money? Well, I got a box underneath the counter. And eventually, what really got stores buying the cash register was NCR actually started a campaign on like, did you get a receipt for that? Hmm because usually when you went in a store and bought something, you didn't get a receipt. This thing spit out a receipt every day, and you would know how many items were on account. That made it a lot easier to keep track of what you were selling. So by the 1900s, cash registers started becoming the standard in most stores. So National Cash Register ended up dominating the market so much, the government actually sued them under antitrust laws because Basically, every cash register in the United States was made by NCR. Does it work? Uh, I don't know. OK. So we have these letters right here. Those could be assigned to different cashiers or different departments in your store. So we're going to go on account, category D, $7.39. It definitely works. So at the end of the day, it would tell you how much you're supposed to be in your drawer. It just made the end of the day for a busy store a lot easier. So what do you want to do with it? I'd like to sell it. How much you want for it? Well, it looks good. It works. I'd like to get $1,000. Um, 
I'll be honest with you, the most I can ring up is 800. <laughs> I'll put a $1,500 price tag on it. Maybe I'll get that, maybe I'll get less. They sit around for a long time. They're heavy. They take up a lot of room. Give you nine. 800 bucks is more than fair on this thing. Let's do eight. All right, sweet, got a deal. I'll meet you right over there. We'll do some paperwork. Thanks. Cha-ching.